here from PickingLessons.com. In this guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a fun fingerstyle arrangement of Handsome Molly, a great old time tune. We're playing it in the key of G. There are two variations. In a moment, we're going to take a look at the first of those variations here in this lesson. But if you head to PickingLessons.com, you'll be able to get yourself a copy of the tab that we're working from. And you'll also find the next part of this lesson where we break down the second variation. And we also have a look at a backup variation if you wanted to sing it or play with somebody singing. And then we'll have a look at a little ending for it as well. You'll also find a play along track there that you can download as you're practicing along, pickandlessons.com. Okay, let's start out with a slow play through this first variation, then we'll talk about the techniques we're using and the tuning we're in. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, so there was the first variation. Now we're using a Trevor's picking technique. We're in drop D tuning, playing in the key of G. So that's our G chord, our drop D tuning. Remember, the sixth string is tuned down to a D from the E down to a D. And the chord position we're starting out of is this G shape here we find in this particular tuning. So very briefly, the Trevor's picking technique, what we're doing here with our thumb, Keep an eye on the notation in the music because you'll find that the lower voice stem pointing down is our thumb notes in the right hand. And you'll see those in the notation there, the lower note there in the tablature as well. The fingers in the right hand, you can use a combination of a single finger or maybe two fingers. It won't really matter. There's nothing too complex here that really needs multiple fingers. So you can get away with just using one finger all the way through, or you might use two fingers. If you want to use three, that's fine as well. But thumb on those low notes, fingers on that melody notes. Okay, so let's just break down what we're playing here. So remember, drop D tuning, key of G. Here's our run in to the first measure. Up to our G note there, our root note. Once you hit that position, what you want to do is get that first finger onto the D there, that third fret, second string, and then we're going to bar that across the top two strings where you're holding the D and the G there. So we're running through these pickup notes into our position for the chord. Just while we're here in the first measure, let's practice this just to get into the Travis picking if you're not too familiar. So holding that chord position, third finger, first finger, thumb, then thumb and a finger. Back to thumb, finger, thumb. One more time. Thumb and then pinch together. Thumb, finger, thumb. So the thumb is alternating over two strings. The fingers are playing those syncopated melody notes on the higher strings. You'll find either a combination of melody note with the bass note or in between the bass note. That's pretty much it. We have some hammer-ons and, and slides later on, but really that's all we're looking at. So one more time, first measure, working on the right hand, thumb, then pinch, thumb, finger, thumb. Work on that if you're not too familiar with the Trevor's picking, but otherwise, once you get into it, the rest is gonna be fairly straightforward as long as you've got that basic technique. Let's move on to the second measure. Here, we've got to be strong in the left hand, holding that first finger down like I mentioned before over the D and the G. Our little finger is going to hammer on there from the D to the E on that first beat. Just eighth notes, one and two to the thumb. Straight to that high G, one and two and. So that's another good exercise just there, those first two beats just to work on to get familiar with how we're approaching this tune. So pinching to start with, and thumb, finger. Second half of that measure, thumb, finger, thumb. Put the second measure together. Three, four. Let's try the first two measures just while we're here. First and second measures. Three, four. One more time. Three, four. Three, four. 
So strong with that little finger, strong hand position in general there. That's probably one of the challenging parts of the hand positions in the arrangement. So really do keep an eye on the finger positions, making sure you've got those fingers in a good position there and your little finger's nice and strong for that hammer arm. Let's move through. Measure three. Just stop and work on these individual measures as exercises. If you haven't played a lot of this style of guitar before, just work on these as exercises. They'll be great to get you going. We're gonna keep moving our way through. After this third measure, we take our hand position that we had here on the G chord, and we're gonna move our first finger up to fret 10. You don't need the, the bass note anymore. We're gonna go over to open D. Our first finger moves up to fret 10 though, and the melody here for measures four through six Of that third fret D. So let's work through that. Now here, first finger again needs to be flat and barring across the two strings. The 10th fret there is string two and string one. Third finger comes in on that melody note there. Pinch, thumb, thumb, finger, thumb. Measure five, this is where the bar is needed. Now this is an interesting one. In measure five, What we need to do here is so we're pinching, thumb, pick that note with the finger. As you hammer it down, you're also going to play the thumb on the low sixth string. That could be a sticking point. Really spend some time on that one. So the count there, one, two, and three. Hammering down with the third finger as the thumb plays. Got to coordinate the two. One, two, and three. When you've got that, bring in that next note there on string one. One, two, and three, and. One, two, and, and. Then bring in that last thumb, the fourth beat. Three, four. And as you start to get these individual measures, start bringing them together from the beginning. Put them together in, in groups. So you could go back from the beginning and work through up to there, for example. Let's look at the next measure here, measure six, where we've got to transition down the neck. So a quick position change. So using the open string there on our bass note to help us move along smoothly. So we have our 10th position there, barring across the two strings. Pinch, thumb, finger, thumb. Move the hand. Landing there on that D note. Thumb there to finish off beat four. One, two, and three, and four. Another great exercise, just work on that one. Now, finishing off before we hit the repeat, our position there on the D, we're gonna stay there, again, barring our first finger. This one here, we're hammering on, beginning on beat one. One, and two, and three, and four. Leave that third finger in once you're there, because we're coming back to it. That will make the left hand's job a little easier if you can just leave it there. So, one, and two, and three, and four. Pinch, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb. Spending some time on each of these individually, that's a great idea. But if you've Travis picked before and familiar with this style of playing, it's a fun arrangement to play, not overly complicated, but challenging enough, particularly for the left hand there. And this final measure before we hit the repeat is pretty straightforward. Pinch, thumb, thumb, finger, thumb. If you've got this far, you'd be fine with that eighth measure. So at this point, we do hit the repeat and we go back and do it again a second time. The second ending will lead us into the second variation. Uh, we'll have a look at that when we get to the next lesson. So basically, if you're unfamiliar with this style of playing or haven't done much of it before, treat each measure as an exercise. Spend time on it, memorize it, build it up so that you can play it without thinking about it, then come back and bring them together. That's a really nice way of going about it. If you're, if you're familiar with the techniques, you're probably going okay already. It's not super hard. It's just a matter of finding those positions in the left hand and give it some practice so you're nice and smooth with those quick transitions up and down the neck. Okay, so head over to pickandlessons.com. In the member section there, we'll have a look at the next variation. We'll also have a look at a backup variation. So a backup variation for playing behind a singer or singing yourself. And we'll also have a look at the ending we can use. Now, 
being a song, you'll find that way. Well, we could play it as a solo instrumental, that'd be fine. But if you're gonna play it with a singer, you're gonna look to arrange it as well in a different way. So you might play one solo variation, then sing a verse, play another solo variation, sing a verse, keep repeating that until all the verses are played through. Then at the end, we'll come in and play that ending. So we'll check all that out. Head over to pickandlaces.com and I'll see you there.